anytime any research is done, okay, at a drug company, at a university, in theory, anywhere, there is supposed to be a group of people that have some oversight over that, okay? And that will help to make sure that the research is safe, that people that are participating are being treated fairly and equitably, right? And that we're not just doing all kinds of random, crazy, coercive types of things, okay? And so that's the point of something on our campus that's called the Institutional Review Board, the IRB, okay? Most universities have an IRB. Uh, we have two different boards here, and then there's four or five boards at the Health Science Center, okay? And so when we want to do research that has the chance to be published, that has the chance to be shared with anyone outside of a classroom, we have to submit basically this large protocol where we tell them, Here's who we want to study. Here's the things we're going to measure. Here's how we're going to measure them. Here's what we're going to do to treat people fairly and equitably. Here's what we're going to do to make sure there's no coercion. Here are what we think the risk and the benefits of the study are and why we think the benefits outweigh the risks. Okay. And then the board looks at it. They review it. They decide we think this looks okay. We will grant you permission to do all of this. Okay. As a part of this, you do an application where you say, here's our protocol. That protocol, and the reason we do this now, that protocol should not be an exact copy of, but will very closely mimic what you put in chapter three of your thesis document, okay? All of the stuff that goes in chapter three can basically go in here and vice versa. How are you gonna recruit people? What is your sample? What are the characteristics? What are your inclusion and exclusion criteria? Et cetera, et cetera, okay? For classroom research, which is what you guys are doing, there is no board, okay? I am the IRB. I am the decider of all things in the classroom, which should scare everyone. Um, there are plenty of days that it scares me, okay? So what you guys are going to do for classroom research, and the reason that it's classroom research is it's meant to be a learning experience. It's not meant that we're going to share our findings beyond and outside of the kind of learning environment that is in the classroom. And so because of that, it doesn't have to go before a full board. I get to make the decision that this is a reasonable and a reasonably safe thing. It's meant to be a learning experience, okay? So this application, that I handed out to all of you guys that's posted on Canvas, this application comes off of the university's IRB webpage. It is for classroom research. So we'll walk through then what you have to include. There are, there are some restrictions on things that will and won't qualify as classroom research as we will see. We will we will fudge one of those just a tiny little bit by allowing exercise, okay? We have permission from the IRB to do this. It's kind of like being, doing a lab thing for our study, okay? So you guys are gonna turn in one of these as a group that, that I'm going to look at and review, and I have to give, I will give you feedback. I will give you feedback on your consent form, and you guys will get that all ready, and then I will sign off you guys will sign off and then you will make a copy. I will keep a copy and that's going to be our guiding document for what you guys are then going to be able to tell us. Okay. So part of this thing at the top here is it's just going to define what makes something classroom research. Okay. It's a component of classroom activities designed to teach you all how to conduct independent research, which is exactly what we are doing. Okay. It is of limited scope and limited sample size, although to be honest, some of you may get a very large number of people to respond to your surveys. Okay? But we're not really going after at-risk populations. We're not really asking things that are particularly uncomfortable or invasive, as far as I know, in those ways. Okay? It will not produce generalizable results that would be acceptable for scholarly presentation publication. 
I take issue with that. You all may do things that would very reasonably qualify as that, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to seek publication for those things. Okay? We're collecting non-sensitive information. Okay? What you guys are going to ask people, this isn't sensitive. It's really, really not sensitive. Okay? And especially since most of it's going to be anonymous, we can ask pretty much anything that we want. And it's not going to be, there's no way to kind of track that. It does not involve deception, okay? Any of you guys take a psychology class and have to do like a research project as part of your psych classes? They do that here. It's pretty much what every psych department in the history of the world does. I can remember being a, an undergraduate student and going and having to do an experiment and it involved deception. I went and I was sort of playing a game where we were trying to put this puzzle together with a, another student. And they told us that they were testing like how well we would work together to kind of put this puzzle, puzzle together and those kinds of things. And they had people paired off, um, which you have to remember that this was like 22 years ago and so things, but it was meant to have men, a man and a woman together. And the real point was they were trying to look at sort of what they were calling ideas of sort of flirting or attraction or something between the participants. And of course, I went and had signed up with one of my friend's girlfriend to go and do all of this. And at the end, they were like, oh yeah, like y'all had others. I'm like, yeah, of course it's Devin. She's like dating one of my best friends. Like, anyway, so I suppose that was a better outcome than the, than the opposite. But that's deception. Telling people, leading them to think that it's one thing. But what you're really trying to study is something entirely different, okay? You cannot do deception as part of classroom research, which makes me think now that they probably shouldn't have been doing that that long ago, because that was like undergraduate classroom research stuff. So we're not doing deception. Likelihood of eliciting a strong negative emotional response is very, very minimal. For the most part, what you guys are going to ask, how are you sleeping, right? What's your physical activity levels? Have you had COVID or not? What were your symptoms? Shouldn't really do any of those things. There's no legal, social, or employment risk. Hopefully, how anybody responds isn't going to risk them from becoming a social pariah or anything or costing their job or something like that, right? We're not going to learn information where we can cancel anybody in that particular way. Use of high physical testing procedures, blood draws, exposure to radiation. We can't do x-rays. We can't do DEXAs. We can't draw blood even if it was to look at something relatively simple like blood lactate, even some of the things that we could do in our lab classes, okay? And we're not collecting from a protected or a vulnerable population, which are going to be kids, pregnant women, psychologically impaired, the elderly, cognitively impaired, prisoners, or very specifically, right, where it's exclusively looking at Native American tribes or tribal organizations, okay? If you all remember from your CITI training, the ideas of beneficence and the ideas of people that things are going to be equitable and those kinds of things. We have a long history of not doing those things in these vulnerable populations, okay? of taking advantage of people, of being deceptive in how we've done things with them. And so in order to make sure that we're not doing any of those things, these particular populations, that's not going to qualify as classroom research. Okay? If we meet these criteria, we are in theory good. So you guys are going to have to go through and fill that particular portion out. Okay? So what you're going to do then, right? And so what I have is this is the one that was on there. And this is from a fall 2015 example. Um, and you guys can just go in and delete stuff out of this if you want, or I can post the blank one. But this just kind of shows you what one from one of Dr. Deb's old classes um, looked like. But you have to give me your project title. You have to put your names on there. You got to put our course section and our semester. Very straightforward thing. Then we're going to get into things that are going to look a, a whole lot like this is what we're doing. Okay. Maximum number of study participants. How many people do you think you want to test? Okay. Overestimate. Overestimate, okay? Minimum age range, maximum age range, right? 
And so we have here where it says gender breakdown. We could call that sex. It might be sex. It might be gender, depending upon what exactly it is your question wants to know. Okay. Most of you probably aren't even going to collect this. Okay. But like in this one, it said 15 males, 15 females. They were concerned with how people identified from a gender standpoint. Site of subject recruitment. Where are you going to try to find people to be in your study? Most of us in this one, you're just going to put University of Oklahoma campus. Okay, we're going to we're going to send out emails for most of you guys. That's how we're going to recruit. For my folks that are testing people in person, you can say like site of recruitment could be email. It could be we're going to lurk out in front of the you know, out in front of the huff and try to like jump out at people and be like, hey, be in my research study. You guys chuckle. When I was a graduate student, we had another graduate student because that's how he recruited people for his, his thesis research. Was he would stand outside until he saw someone come in that he thought looked like this. He was looking for very specific sort of body types and criteria and those things. And he would wait until he saw someone that he thought fit his thing. And he would run over to them and be like, hey, do you want to be in my study? You know, you look like you're very fit. Do you want to be in my study? Or you look like you're very out of shape and overweight. Do you want to be in my study? I'm not kidding. Okay. How they managed to let him do that, I don't know. But that's what happened. Um, you'll list inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria. For many of you, that's not going to be that big of a deal on your surveys. Like anybody that can take it can be included, probably. There may be some age limits or things like that. For my folks that are doing uh, they're doing some exercise, you all have a, they have some tighter parameters, so, right? Based upon concerns. We're going to talk about the recruitment and enrollment procedures. Where are you going to try to get people from? And how many of your participants do you envision coming from those areas? So are you going to go to individual classes and take your script and stand up in front of the class and be like, hey, come take our survey. Hey, come be in our study. Okay. Y'all are welcome to do that. Most of our faculty and grad students would be more than happy for you to come to their classes and do that. We've had students go and go over to some of the larger classes, right? Like go to Gen Psych. Um, or go to anatomy and physiology class or something. Cindy's always happy to let people come and talk to her class. Okay? So if you want to do that, then tell me approximately how many folks you want to try and get. Okay? And advertisement. You want to hang things in the bathroom. You want to hang things out on the door. Perfectly perfect fine. Okay? You guys probably see those. We get some, some folks from doing all of that to make a little flyer with tabs on the bottom that you can pull off. It's got somebody's name or cell phone number or email address on there. If you want to do that, I will give you a template for how to make those flyers, and I have to approve that particular flyer. A web listing doesn't really apply as much. This was come up kind of in the in the in, in before. What I would say is what you might do is sort of other, which it just might be like posting to social media or something like that. Okay. Email. Um, and so we can kind of go back and forth on, well, I'm going to email the advertisement to people. That's fine. But we can just so that we kind of know what we're going to do. Okay. And so you may approach people with direct contact. Hey, roommate, take my thing. Okay. How you all choose to, to do that is fine. You're probably not mailing letters to people. You might talk to them over the phone or you might talk to them on Zoom. We'll say that. Or you might email them. Right, there's not something that says like text or direct message on Instagram or whatever it's going to be. The forms are a little outdated for our way of communicating, but you guys kind of get the, get the idea. Okay, if we're going to send a mass email, then I have to send it. You guys can't send it to the mass mail thing, um, and it will have these things that are going to be wrong. Okay. If we are going to try to recruit people from outside of OU, so you're going to put something on your Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or God only knows what other things you guys are using, then we have to include this. The University of Oklahoma is an equal opportunity institution, must be included in your email or in your posting or whatever, whatever that's going to be. Okay. Okay. So pretty standard, pretty straightforward. 
This is who are we going to recruit, who are we going to use, and how many of them are we going to train? Okay. So, the next piece is going to talk about when you're collecting data, where is that going to happen? For those of you that are giving a survey, that data collection is going to happen on a participant's computer or phone or tablet or something. It can happen wherever they, they happen to have internet access. Okay. If we're going to be doing some in-person physical testing, you need to say, and we'll need to talk about where can we do that, right? Are they going to come to your house? Are y'all going to come here to the lab? Are you going to go over two columns to the lab? We will make space and equipment available to you. We just need to know, right? And so then describe setting a school, a community, a hospital, and these kinds of things. For the most part, they're going to be, you guys are going to be doing these things. The next part is going to be a little bit of stuff maybe from your chapter one. You're going to give us some background information and tell me what your research questions are and what your hypotheses are. Again, you can copy and paste this like right from chapter one. What's your purpose? What is your research question or questions? What are your hypotheses? What are you trying to do? Okay, that's what goes in in this first term number one. Okay. Then you must describe your research design. Is it cross section? Is it repeated measure? Is it longitudinal? Okay. What's going to happen? You can put those things in there. You're going to have to say, how are we going to do recruitment, even though you just spent right like two pages talking about that, but just kind of write it out. We're going to put up flyers, and we're going to do classroom recruitment. Nope, we're going to send a mass mail, and we're going to post on our social media, and then follow up through your time. Okay. Next in section four is the real action area. Okay. List and describe the tasks that they're going to do. Okay, step by step description of each procedure. They are going to take a survey on Qualtrics. That survey is going to ask them questions about anxiety, depression, sleep, whether they've tested positive for COVID or not, height, weight, body comp, whatever. Okay, this is where you put those particular. They're going to go here. This should be stuff that comes right out of chapter three in your methods section. Okay. Right out of chapter three. Let me just check and make sure my wife doesn't need something. Next piece, my voice cracks, is the idea of how are we going to protect people's information? Okay, are we going to have audio data? Is there going to be video data? Okay, you guys can get this if you want. I would advise you not to. It's just more stuff that will have to be pathway protected. There's going to be photos or anything like that. Some of you may want to take a photo to put in your presentation. Like here's a person doing that testing. Very common. You can do that. Somebody has to sign a photo release, which I can get you, and then we have to like crop out their face. Okay? So here is a person doing our protocol, right? But they got a black box over their face, so we don't know who it is. Okay? So then you've got to talk about how you're going to store and then get rid of any information that you collect. You take a survey, it's done, right? That data is housed on the OU kind of cloud, it is password protected to be able to get in there. If you download all of that data so that you can do something with it, which you will have to, it will end up on one of your computers, right? Does that computer have password protection? How many people know that? Okay, it's in an Excel file or something like that, and you guys make it into a Google Doc and put it on your shared Google thing. Great sentence. Um, who has access to that, right? How many people can access it? Is it one of the passwords for those kinds of those kinds of access? And is there going to be a way, okay, to match up a participant's name to their particular name? This is a HIPAA issue, okay? For my survey folks, you're not getting names or anything else. I don't imagine 
is completely anonymous, it matters much, much less so. For my folks, and Brady is not here, but for my folks doing in-person testing, you guys are going to have a sheet or a document somewhere where here's a person's name, here's the ID number we've given them. That needs to be somewhere that's password protected, for sure. Exist in one place, and then in stuff that may have a chance to get seen, you're just going to identify them by their, by their name. Okay? Uh, so in number four, will you maintain direct identifiers? So for my survey groups, y'all are probably going to be in no, okay? For my, my in-person groups, the answer may be yes. And you're just gonna say, we need this so that we can contact them to check on them or come back for multiple things. But when the entire study is over, we will delete that information, okay? What we're really, really, really looking for is, are we going to be careful with their protected health information? Um, you have to attest that you won't provide a copy of research data to identify research data to anyone outside of the research team. For this instance, I am considered part of your research team. Okay? As, as the instructor, I am considered part of the research team. Then you're going to say, are we going to have them sign a consent form? And the answer is, of course, yes. So you're not asking for a waiver as we look down here. So the answer on this question is no. We don't want to waive consent. For the folks doing surveys, the first question will be your consent form. We'll talk about what's going on in the study. You'll tell people, do you understand the risk? Do you understand the benefits? Here's what's happening. By clicking yes, you acknowledge that you, you know, sort of know this. Okay? That's that's kind of how we're going to get at that. In-person people, you will have you will have a physical one that they will sign, okay? You will sign it, they will sign it, you'll make them a copy, we'll have two copies of it, you keep one and you'll bring it to me and I will keep it, okay? And then they will get one to take with them. So we'll talk about the consent form uh, a little bit in just a second. So will we obtain informed consent? The answer is absolutely yes, we will, okay? The part about trying to get consent is we don't want them to feel coerced, okay? Here is the thing. You can take it. You can read it. You can think about whether or not you want to do this, okay? You, you don't have to have me looking over your shoulder being like, come on, come on, sign it, sign it, do it, do it, okay? Most people don't care. Most of the stuff that y'all are doing is not going to be a big enough deal that that's going to matter, but that's how we do this. People need to have time and space to consider and make their own decisions. On our surveys, we will include some language that says you can choose to stop whenever you want. Okay? Yours, for the most part, are probably going to say, yes, it's going to collect protected health information. Most of you are probably going to be there. We're not testing children. Okay? It's going to say if, yes, it doesn't qualify for a classroom research project. In many instances, what we consider protected health information, like height and weight, it's not real kind of other stuff. So we're going to be like that. All right. You then have to talk about the risks and the benefits of the study. It's going to ask if it involves any of these kinds of things. There will be some exercise and physical exertion for some of your folks. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. And then you have to describe any sort of risk or harm. Our survey folks, people may feel uncomfortable. That's probably like all that this can be. Okay? If they had a traumatic experience and when they had COVID and you ask them if they had COVID, it may remind them of that. That might be a thing. If you ask them about anxiety or depression or sleep, that may make them somewhat uncomfortable. That's just kind of the way it is. We'll tell them that up front. They can stop if they want. Okay? Um, for the most part, we don't really anticipate any benefits from y'all's research other than you guys can graduate, and that's not really the benefit that they're looking for, okay? Um, it's not like you might be in a drug trial for a new experimental cancer drug that might cure your cancer, um, or you might get the placebo. So that's always a tricky one, okay? But we don't really have, like, real benefit from what you guys are doing. Are there anticipated benefits to society? Try your best, kid. 
if we were to do your study for real and if we were to find something interesting, how might that actually benefit a broader society? Okay, so let's do that. So then there is this will you, there be any sort of compensations or inducements? It should be for most of you guys, it should be no, like we're not offering course credit, we don't do that anymore, much to my chagrin. We're not able to offer um, extra credit in our classes for people that were doing the research. Um, it was decided that to do that, we had to offer extra credit to everybody, even if you didn't want to do research. And so we had to have additional assignments and things. And so some other faculty decided they didn't love that. Um, so it's really probably unless you're going to give people a gift card or raffle off something, um, then the answer is going to be no. You do your checklist and then. You guys sort of say, I'm going to assure yourself and me that you're going to do these things. You guys sign, and then I will sign, and you guys will do it together. Okay? That's how this goes. All right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You just need to make sure that you've got the correct information. Okay? On the consent form, it is in many ways a rehashing of what goes in what goes in the, the other documents. Okay. And if you look at, let me see if I can option for a moment what goes in first. But much of this information you're going to pull directly from the application. What's the purpose? Okay. What's your title? Who are you? Who's conducting it? What is your purpose? Who are the participants? How many people? Why are they being asked to do this? Like, right, you have been sent this survey because you are an OU student, right? You fit into our age range. Okay. What are the procedures? Tell them very specifically. You will be asked to complete a survey on this and this and this. You will be asked to drink tart cherry juice or a placebo and perform some exercise and report back for us on how much pain you have and how well you slept, right? What is the length of participation? The survey will take 10 minutes. Being in our other study will take a week, right? Whatever, whatever that's going to be. What is your length of participation? What are the risks? What are the benefits? Okay. Pull that stuff directly out of the application. Will they be compensated? Probably not. Okay. You just say you will not be reimbursed for your time in your participation. They have this other statement that basically says if something happens and you are injured or you get ill from being in our study, we will do what we can to try to take care of you, but basically we're not paying the medical bills. Okay? And so you're going to ask, does that hold up in a court of law? Absolutely not. It doesn't hold up. Right? If we do something negligent in the midst of all of this, despite the fact they signed the consent form where we specifically say this, they might still be able to sue. Do you have to say that? Sure. I injured myself taking the survey. Who cares if I was doing it while I was driving and I wasn't paying attention? That's, I, you know. But we've never had any trouble, but that's what that is. It talks about confidentiality that we're not going to share things. You put your contact information, maybe one person from the study um, will, will be able to put their information. It's going to be in there, right? then there has to be a place for them to sign and for one of you guys to sign, right? And that's how it goes. For the surveys, they don't sign, they click the button. It just says, yes, I agree to this. And then we move on to the next one. Okay. All right. So you guys have to have these things done before we can actually collect data, okay? So in an absolute ideal 100% perfect world, if you guys could have this to me by next Thursday, I might be able to kind of give you some feedback in class and then, um, and then you guys can make those changes and I can give you a thumbs up and you can start collecting data. Assuming we can get your we can get your questionnaires and things loaded up in the fall. Okay? That's kind of the next place where we are. All right? So, if you want to keep working on finishing your chapter two right now, that is great. If in addition you've done that and you don't want to mess with this,